Well, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, a minute or two late here. Um, had a little coordination issues. We, we've got uh, a surprise special guest here joining us this week. I've got Nate Zeller, our investment strategist, uh, chartered financial analyst. He's also a CFP like myself. And uh, I think a lot of you have probably had the opportunity to listen to him on some of these market huddles. But um, today we are going to be talking a little bit deeper about something that I'm finding a little concerning uh, that we're starting to see out there. And that has to do with uh, the loss of buying power. Uh, inflation is something that um, uh, initially was talked about as being kind of just a short term little thing we're going to have to put up with as we get out of COVID. But we're starting to see with all the um, different things going on in the world, you know, they, we've got uh, uh, ships that are backed up on the ports of Long uh, Long Beach and in and, and L.A. there and, and, and everything else. And uh, uh, employers are having a hard time finding employees. It means that they're paying employees more and just overall cost of goods and and uh, things with the uh, energy independence and, and what have you. And and now being more reliant on uh, things like fuel and such, we're starting to see a whole lot of things out there. So when you start thinking about the biggest threats that you have to your retirement and what those are today, uh, well, the truth is there's probably a lot of different things out there. We got, um, you know, recent polls have told us that folks are worried about higher taxes, uh, rising cost of inflation, uh, what's going on and what the schools are teaching us, the border crisis, and, and just this whole division of the polit political environment here where we have, uh, you know, um, it seems like, uh, you know, in D.C. there, they're just not getting along very well. Um, the one thing that continues to come up a lot and the highest right now is inflation. And it's topped the list as the number one concern for many families. And so while we're starting to feel this a lot in the grocery stores and the gas pumps, retail, you know, they're talking about problems we're going to see going into the holiday season here. Um, I think that we can all agree that this has become more than just transitory. It's something that is going to probably be around for a little bit. I'm going to get some, uh, I'm going to let Nate chime in here a little bit about what he sees um, and how he looks at this. But the real uh, problem here is that it can have a devastating impact on a retiree. So that's what we're going to be talking about on this week's um, market huddle. Uh, Nate, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. So, um, you know, Nate, um, as we talk about these threats, um, I'm taking myself off so that I, uh, but um, as we talk about these threats, you know, inflation is something that we're talking a whole lot more about here in our offices at Secured Retirement. Um, why don't you share with us a little bit about what inflation is and, and, and uh, um, just kind of what the real issue is here that we're looking at? Yeah, sure. Um you know, inflation is just an increase in the cost of goods and services that we purchase. It's a gradual decline in the value of the dollar, um, which, you know, results in a decline in your purchasing power over time. So, for example, if inflation's 3% a year over about 25 years, the cost of goods will double from what it is now. Um, the problem is inflation, we're at 5 or 6%. So, you know, cost of goods is going up pretty significantly. And this is, uh, you know, inflation levels we haven't seen in about 30 years. Well, and I think a lot of the folks that are joining us here today, um, you know, one of the areas that this inflation that we're seeing can actually benefit um, retirees that we've seen a cost of living adjustment when it comes to Social Security was announced next year. Everybody's going to get a 5.9% bump in their Social Security benefit. Um, my biggest concern is that they're going to offset that with a increase in how much it's gonna cost us for our Medicare. So what you actually see in your pocketbook may not necessarily reflect that full 6% increase or 5.9. Um, uh, if you're still working, you might be able to see uh, uh, an increase in what you can demand for salary. But for the most part, um, the real problem is, is if we start getting, you know, as we transition retirement, a lot of times we kind of move towards more of a fixed income. Like I said, social security may not keep up in net dollars with inflation. So it, you know, it's what Ronnie Reagan called the silent killer. It just slowly kind of erodes away with what our purchasing power is. And, you know, I use the analogy here a couple of weeks. I think you were on that show with us too, Nate, but, you know, it's like um, a bunch of frogs in a, in a pot of water, you know, as we start to 
if you throw a frog, if a frog gets thrown into a pot of boiling water, it jumps right out. But the problem is you put the frog in there and you slowly heat it up to a boil, the frog will, will, will die. Um, this inflation problem, unless they can get it under control, I'm really concerned that over the next 20 years, uh, which we haven't seen a whole lot of inflation over the last 20, this could be really something that I think a lot of families aren't bringing into their retirement planning. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would agree because everybody seems to look, you know, when it comes to investment returns, they're really looking at the bottom line number and they say, hey, my account or the S&P 500 did X last year. So that's, that's a good return, but they're not looking at, you know, what inflation and how that gnaws away at it. You know, if you, I always pose this question to people, if you have an investment that returns 6%, but with no inflation or an investment that returns 9%, but with 4% inflation, which one would you choose? Well, you should take the 6% because you're getting a better real return. Well, and you know, another area that really is something that I think a lot of retirees need to be planning around is, you know, as you transition from an accumulation of wealth, uh, you know, just a pure wealth accumulation focus to one where how do we start taking our money back? How do we make it last a lifetime? How do we make sure it's going to be there for us and we can continue to spend in confidence? To do that, a lot of times we want to make sure that families um, are, we make some recommendations sometimes about making sure that families don't have all of their money exposed to the stock market. So while the stock market's done okay this year, pretty good, um, what about that money that we want to have not exposed to, to, to market valuation risk? Things like savings, right? If I've got a savings account and I'm, even if it's our short term, you know, three to six months of emergency funds, but a lot of times we want to make sure families have maybe a little bit more set aside uh, in case there are some market valuation fluctuations. I never want to risk money I need for income. But if I'm only earning, you know, on a savings account right now, let's be generous and give it a quarter of 1%, you know, a 0.25%, and inflation's really running here at 5 to 6%. Well, congratulations, that money you've been sitting on in savings, you just lost 5% or 6% on that money. You've safely gone backwards, right? Nate? Yeah, absolutely. You have. You you know, you've lost that 6% difference. Your purchasing power is reduced by that much. So you've you know, safely lost your money. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I think that now is a good time to maybe address that. Usually we kind of wait till the end here, but Kurt had a good question here and he's asking about comparing inflation today uh, to um, inflation that we might've seen coming out of World War II is actually, maybe we should look at what are some of those things we can be doing, but let's look back uh, uh, to World War II and maybe an, a period of time where we saw a lot of inflation, but also a, uh, a, a negative growth in the uh, GDP, which is, you know, the growth of the economy that back to the, to the seventies there. Um, what, what kind of parallels can we draw here, Nate, about what we're seeing today versus maybe coming out of world war two or coming out of uh, through the Vietnam era and what have you. Yeah. And those are two very different time periods. World war two, there was a lot of spending, obviously defense spending, war spending, um, you know, so all the troops came home, um, they spent their money, they had families, and it, it was really a very strong economy. And that's a sharp contrast to what we saw in the 70s, too, where there were some real supply constraints. Um, you, you had the gas lines that everybody's either experienced or saw pictures of. Uh, so there was a stagflation in the 70s where there was a lot of inflation with very little growth and, you know, relatively high levels of unemployment. I tell you, that's a real concern that we return to something similar to the 70s today. Now, there's some things that are different, so it's not exactly the same, but, you know, the, the growth seems to be slowing down a little bit from coming out of the pandemic. And so if that is the case, we might see a little bit of stagflation. And, you know, looking back to during the 70s, when people look at stock market returns during that period and they factor out inflation, that entire decade, the returns were a little bit less than zero. Um, overall. So it was a very difficult time to be an investor. Well, you know, we talk about the supply chain constraints. I mean, you look, again, go back to the ships sitting off the coast of Los Angeles there, or I do remember as a, a child, I must have been six years old. I remember jumping behind my mom's car and helping her push it to the gas pump because we'd run out of line. And I do remember those lines a little bit, although I was probably, I don't think I was 10 years old yet. So um, a lot of folks haven't seen this. A lot of advisors haven't really had to experience inflation. Any advisor that's helping families with their retirement savings that's been in the industry less than 20 years, 
um, hasn't really had to experience this. So maybe it's time to start thinking about what we're doing here uh, internally about trying to make sure that we are protecting our clients from inflation. Uh, one is to make sure that we always have a diversified source of different kinds of income. Most of you that are working with us, I know not everybody on the call here works with us right now. And um, if that's the case and you want to discuss this a little bit deeper, uh, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to schedule some time to kind of review their situation. And then whether you're currently a client of ours and or maybe just in just a guest here listening or maybe uh a uh, long-time client, I, I encourage you to take us up on that because I think that inflation is something we need to be looking at. But, you know, we talk a lot about what I call mailbox income. It's money that hits the checkbook regardless of what's going on in Wall Street. So being able to take money back without having to lock in losses because markets come down or have income that, that hits the checkbook automatic, things like Social Security or pensions, optimizing those. Maybe you want to start looking at some real estate or if you have some real estate, having different sources of diversified income. A lot of families that we work with um, will look at indexed accounts that have some guarantees associated with income. A lot of different ways that we want to be thinking about diversifying income. And that's probably the one uh, number one way that we want to uh, uh, protect ourselves from rising inflation. But I know that Nate you're also doing some things internally within our portfolios. What are some of those things that you're looking at? Yeah, certainly. So, you know, if you look at stocks, traditionally have been a, a good, you know, way to hedge against inflation. Like I mentioned, in the '70s, they were there was a positive return, but it was you know real return near zero. But small cap stocks did extremely well during that time because those companies were growing, and we might return to see a time like that today. The other thing that we're doing, we positioned a lot of our portfolios this way, is we're taking advantage of some of those sectors that tend to benefit from inflation. You look at the raw materials, um, you know, precious, well, precious metals have been a little flat and it's a bad example, but more of the raw materials like copper and steel, for example, do well. And Joe, you'd mentioned real estate, real estate, any of the hard assets tend to do well in times of inflation. And so there's a lot of stocks and you know, sectors to invest in at this time to actually benefit from inflation. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Well, I, I, yeah, it is. I guess you gotta be, but, but, uh, to, you know, if looking back just two years ago to say, hey, we would have a certain amount of money just invested in a copper company. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if that's really where we would have been thinking that was going to be where we see an area of growth. But if we start to see um, some of this inflation, areas like commodities are going to end up appreciating maybe differently and can be a good hedge that everybody needs to be looking at, uh, whether you're using our portfolios or uh uh, uh, doing this on your own. Um, you know, I did want to spend a little bit more time about the importance of having a steady income. Um, I've been doing this now for 26 years. I, I can tell you that when we start to see market volatility, whether it's going all the way back to 2000, 2001, 2002, or 2008, or even just getting into this uh, environment where all of a sudden we had uh, you know, COVID that took down the stock market almost 40% in a matter of less than six weeks. Those families that had the checkbook money coming in, that what I call mailbox income, money that was hitting regularly, that was a completely different experience for those families that could ride out some of the volatility and uncertainty around that versus those families that, uh, you know, are, are withdrawing every single month. Um, we get a question a lot of times right around the beginning of the year, Joe, I'm turning 72. It used to be 70 and a half, but now it's 72. Um, I need to take my required distribution. Is it better for me to take that in January? Is it better for me to take it in December? Well, the reality is, is if all of a sudden we uh, have a stock market that continues to grow, waiting until the end of the year because the amount that comes out for an RMD is pre-established come January 1st, waiting longer makes sense. But if all of a sudden we see some market volatility and we're forced to lock in losses at the end of the year, that doesn't make sense. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll, we'll schedule a, either some pr uh, sporadic payments, or I always kind of think of it as a uh, bird in the hand type approach. Take it early, especially in the rising uh, in an inflationary environment. Maybe that's uh, something that's a good idea as well. You know, another thing that could come out of this inflation, Nate, is a rise in interest rates. And I know that I'm kind of throwing this at you here because uh, um, I don't think it was part of our slide deck here. But Talk a little bit about interest rates and what you see happening there. What are some of the things that they're going to do to try to combat um, uh, inflation or the real risk of, rate, of increasing inflation and what we want to be thinking about around our portfolios or our retirement planning if we think we're going to see some rising interest rates? 
Yeah, and that's one thing. You know, we, we looked at some charts where if you look at interest rates today, they have not kept pace with inflation where historically they have, which leads us to believe that we'll see a spike or, or anyhow, a rise, maybe more of a steady rise versus a spike in interest rates. If we remember uh, the relationship between bond prices and bond yields is a teeter-totter, it's inverse. So if interest rates go up, it means bond prices are going to go down. So you know, historically, at least over the last 40 years, where we've seen this great bull run in the fixed income markets, we might see bond prices go down if we see interest rates move up. So it's not a very good diversifier against the stock market. So not only are you um, not receiving the diversification, but you're also most likely losing money too. These bond prices could uh, lose value. So I would really caution against using traditional fixed income right now. Well, and we saw that going back to the 70s too, where all of a sudden we had a rising interest environment and, and you know, from the time that uh, pretty much when Ronald Reagan came into office and all of a sudden interest rates started coming down, um, bonds, a 60-40 blend of stocks to bonds was really the place to be since 1980. So for the last 40 years, going back a little bit before that, um, there was a lot more pressure on um, the bond markets. Of course, back in the 50s and 60s, a far fewer families relied on the stock market for their performance. So uh, again, it really comes back to um, where are we at? It's a little bit changing times. Our retirement's going to be a little bit different than our grandparents' retirement. Um, and making sure that we're looking at all the different ways to protect ourselves from rising prices, um, rising interest rates. It's really about a comprehensive approach to making sure we have income that's going to last a lifetime. And, and, you know, the other piece of this is with all the stimulus out there, um, you know, it, it's hard to imagine that we aren't going to start seeing some significant increases in taxes. So bringing that into a retirement plan makes sense. I always say it, and I'll say it again, this uh, this uh, uh, market huddle, families tend to hire a secured retirement here, not because of the wealth accumulation, not that that's not important, but it's really about how to make sure that we have money that's going to last a lifetime. Most families want to maintain their lifestyle and making sure we're bringing in inflation for uh provisions to protect us from inflation as part of that. So we money we spend in our 60s, we don't wish we had it back in 70 or 80. Um, and it's about tax reduction. So working in those two areas in conjunction with wealth accumulation, but never forgetting that the income and, and tax reduction may be the most important to us. So um, with that said, if you are joining us here, um, oh, I did want to talk about some upcoming events here. Um, in a second, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to, I can do this first. Um, you should see a little link there if you'd like to schedule some time. But um, we have a couple market huddles again every Monday. We do these at, at lunch. The next uh, market huddle here at the end of the month, which will be the uh, 22nd, I believe, we're going to be doing uh, uh, what we call our lunch and learns. That's where everybody can join us in the office here. Um, and instead of sub sandwiches or actually Jimmy John's that we've been doing, um, it's going to be toys for tacos. So we're going to bring in some tacos and uh, um, uh, some, some bring it to cater in some Mexican type stuff. Um, bring a gift. Um, good idea. A good way to kind of uh, give to those that may need more. Um, we're going to be raising some gifts and some money for toys for tots. We'll make sure everybody walks away with a taco or two. And then if you do any kind of charitable gifting, some year end strategies around that that are really gonna be kind of pertinent right now. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. The other event that's not on here, on November 10th, November 10th, we are doing a, uh, a salute to veterans. We're gonna be doing a veterans uh, appreciation event. Um, we're gonna be doing this at the Marriott, I think they call it the Marriott West, but it's right there on 394 and uh, like Hopkins Crossroads. Um, and we're bringing in, um, John Creasel, Staff Sergeant John Creasel. Some of you know that he was a state representative. He's a wounded vet. He's uh, um, going to do a nice um, uh, presentation for an hour. We're going to be buying everybody that is a vet or a friend of a vet. You can bring guests to this. If you know of a vet um, and they aren't even working with us, send it. It's not about uh, um, talking about secured retirement, this event. It's really going to be just uh, trying to do something around uh, recognition of veterans. Uh, again, so we're going to have John Creasel do a presentation uh, and and buy veterans and their guest lunch on November 10th. If you want more information on that or um, just scheduling a, a good time to review things, whether you're a current client or not, uh, give us a call here, 952-460-3260. 
send us an in, uh, email at info at secured retirements, or you can just click the offer you have there at the bottom and schedule some time. Although if it's about the veterans event, maybe just giving the office a call would be better. Um, again, it's open to, so if you know somebody else that is a vet and would like to, uh, join us for this lunch and maybe you just would like to, maybe you're not a vet, but you want to bring them to the luncheon. Good way to do that. So with that said, um, Nate, can you see the question there? He's asking about short-term money. What do we do here over the next couple of years to protect ourselves with short-term money if we start seeing a loss of 6% uh, uh, inflation rates and what have you? Yeah, that, that's where it's going to get difficult is, is the short-term. So we're seeing these you know, inflation rates that are higher. Obviously, stock market can be volatile, so we generally don't advise people you know, if, if they need access to the money within a shorter period of time, within a few years, the stock market is probably not the best place to put it. So it, it's difficult. I, I think the best thing to do is um, look for short-term investments. Sometimes, you know, there's floating rate bonds, for example, that are, you know, a little closer tied in. It may not fully make up for inflation, but at least it would be better than sitting at zero or, you know, close to zero that a CD or savings account sitting in. And as we start to see these short-term rates move up, I, I think it will get a little better for investors, especially on the shorter side. But to be honest, it, it's a tough call for any short-term money right now when we are seeing inflation move higher like we are. Well, I know we had visited for lunch last week and we were talking about this a little bit, Nate. Um, you know, you might want to take a look at some of the buffered accounts that we have if it's more middle-term money. You know, maybe you don't need it uh, in the next six months, but it's a little bit further out. There's some downside protection with some of the buffered ETFs that we are using sometimes. Again, a little less the, uh, uh, liquidity, but but something that if it's more like a year to three-year money that we might feel a little bit more comfortable talking about, it's something we really should look at one-on-one. -on -one. And then, you know, the indexed accounts we have, um, where you have access up to 10% of the amount that's in there, that's another fantastic way. If you can, uh, if there's enough there that we can use that as part of the savings component, um, knowing that we can take out 10% of the premium that was put in, but yet we can get better rates of return. You know, these have been returning anywhere from, uh, well, four to six is what we usually say, but, you know, they've been getting six to, you know, we've seen some double digit numbers here over the last 18 months and some of these. So um, a lot of different things we can kind of review with you as ways to do that. So Kurt, it's a great question. I think that part of the answer is it depends. It depends exactly uh, what we've currently been doing and, uh, and and what your overall goals are with that money. But if it's truly just money setting aside for an emergency, um, we might have some challenges there. Agreed, Nate? Yeah, I, I do agree. It, it is. It's very personal, individualized. Um, and Joe, you did touch on some of the things that we can look at too. If some of these are a little more complex. We want to have an individual conversation. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Otherwise, um... You know, I always try to keep these to less than 25 or 30 minutes, but I'm happy to, because um, this is a pretty good, pretty important topic as we talk about inflation. Anybody else? All right. Well, um, if you are uh, would like to review your own retirement planning uh, with the team here, uh, if we're already working with you, just uh, reach out to us at the number on your screen, or you can, again, schedule right through that uh, um that link that we published there. If you uh, are not a client, you can also use the link or give us a call, shoot us an email. We're happy to be here. We wanna be of value and we wanna make sure that we're on top of these things. So it's a good time as we get to the end of the year. Hey, one more thing before I let everybody go. I know a lot of our clients are currently doing and moving money around for uh, Roth uh, conversions or they're moving money out of their IRAs here um, as part of their tax planning we're doing. Um, November 15th is the date that TD Ameritrade has set aside as a date that as long as we get that accomplished before uh, the next two weeks here, they agree that they will, you know, contractually make sure that every uh, Roth conversion happens. After that, it's going to be kind of best efforts. It doesn't mean that they won't get done if we send something off on December 1st. Um, but but uh, so if you are listening to us here today and you know you had additional money that we were looking at trying to remove from IRAs and do Roth conversions with, I encourage you to also make a phone call there on those 952-460-3260. And let's review your situation there. And uh, if there's anything that needs to be done in the next two weeks, we should do that 
uh, before, you know, while we know that TD Ameritrade can assure us that they can get those done, not that we won't try later, but it'd just be a good idea to try to do that. So with that said, I'm available for anybody if they have any questions. Nate, I know you're available as well. Just call the number there and, and ask for Nate. And uh, with that said, I hope everybody else has a great rest of your week and we'll be back uh, uh, next Monday with another um, market huddle. All right, we'll let that go. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.